It's time for At The Hops, the program that brings crafty songwriters and craft brews together for one intoxicating experience. And now, fresh off the wagon is your host, songwriter and avid beer consumer, Mr. Chaz E. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to At The Hops, the podcast that always brings together music and always brings together beer for one exciting program. This is Chaz E. from Nashville, Tennessee, and with me... My main man, my brother from another mother, the man who put North Carolina on the map, Mr. Mike Mitchell. Brown sugar, how come you taste so good? Oh, I love oh, 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 oh. brown sugar. <laughs> Mike is, in, is singing that because we're drinking some brown sugar from La Granita's Brewing. We're already into the beer side. I'm not sure how to describe this beer. It's not quite an IPA. It's hoppy. It's hoppy, but it's it, it's sweet, too. Kind of maple I, like I don't really taste the sweet, but it's good. It is good. I, I really it. like it. You got the bottle there. Is there any information? Because I already... Yeah, it's got the, the name. Brown Sugar. <laughs> That's good. It's a sweet release. <laughs> so it is sweet. Okay, so you know your beer, I, don't you? I, I know sweet stuff when I taste it. Of course, you probably read the label before I came over. I did, but, you know, I, I don't... We probably should read labels before we drink this stuff. There might be something in it we don't uh, want to drink. It's yeah, true. We just open it up and drink it. Could be like a, a what do they call it? a disclaimer that says... Yeah. Like, um, don't behavior. Blame, don't blame me. What is that song? Oh, that's a that's an old uh, reggae song. Oh man, I don't know a lot of reggae songs dun, except for Bob dun. Marley. We got lots to do today. We have our first guest of the year in the studio. We're starting our guest appearances. You know, we kind of had a kind of calm January getting the show back on the road, but now we got a wonderful guest today. Hysterical man. He's a songwriter too. He is. He's a songwriter, a great musician, but he's Well, who is funny. it? Who is it? Who is it? Mr. Steve Goody is coming Steve on. Steve Goody. Yes. Oh, my God. They're already... Goody. Clown. He'll be here. You know, that, the name Goody goes with his persona. It, is that really his name? We'll or have to ask him that. Yeah. He's been on all kinds of... His songs have been on Dr. Domeno's show, Howard Stern's show. He's And he's a regular fixture of the Bluebird, so anyone that's been there to the Sunday night shows... Probably remembers him the most, you know? He's the host. He's of very funny. Hysterical. He's a fixture. Sticks out of the wall. We've actually been wanting to have him on the show for like a couple of years. And every time we're at the Bluebird, I go, Steve, when are you going to do the podcast? And finally, he's got some free time. What changed his mind? Oh, just just having the free time? <laughs> I guess so. Oh, okay. Hey, but you know what I wanted to mention? We were talking about the Grammys, and we looked at Best American uh, Yeah, best how did we do on our picks? I, I haven't heard... Any of the winners except for the biggies. I can't believe best Beck American won. Album. I can't believe Beck won best. Yeah, album. it wasn't Jeff Beck. No, I Beck. don't know much about Beck. Do you? I've heard that album. I was a little surprised, frankly. I haven't heard it. So you heard it, and we're uh, it was okay. But I, you know, I don't think it was album of the year or anything like well, that. Well, the the best American Roots performance went to Rosie and Cash. I, Feathers not a bird, like you said. And same with Best Americana Album, that same album, River and the Thread, Roseanne Cash, and you picked both of those. I'm something. You know it. She also got Best American Roots Song for Feathers Not wow. a Burden. So, it was a Roseanne Roots Night. It was. You know, She's got a feather in her cap now for yeah. that Feathers Not a Bird. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good album. That, that's a good, that is a good album. Is it, though? But um, Is it... Um, did it really knock you out? Because I, I got the same. I really liked it. Okay. But I really like her. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. So, so yeah, it was, it was a good album. I went and bought that because another one that was mentioned was the John Hyatt album, uh, Terms of My Surrender. And I went ahead and bought the whole album. After Is it we good? One song. It's very good. But, you know, you know, the whole album, on you know, it's pretty much a, an old organic blues album all the way through. So... Uh, Sounds like it would be really good. It, it is really good, and I'm biased towards John Hyatt, too, but I'm not sure if it's best Americana album. You know what I mean? After hearing it, I you know, I would, after getting through so many songs, I was like, yeah, it's good, but we've heard a, it's it's pretty much a blues after blues after blues. Well, it didn't get best. No, it didn't. So, so you're I right. guess Rose, yeah. <laughs> it definitely is not. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to hear that. Yeah. I'll, oh, yeah, I'll have to... Uh, let you listen to mine. I would never burn a copy and steal. Brown sugar. Mr. John Hyatt, a local Nashville guy. Big fan of his, though. I love John Hyatt. Today, so Steve Goody, 
We're going to learn about Imperial Ales. All right. Imperial I Ales. I always wanted to learn about Imperial I've Ales. I've always wanted about Imperial you know, I was at a bar while, last night, and I asked the bartender for an Imperial Ale. Did you? He thought I meant the car, Imperial. And what did he say? He so said, he, he should drink and drive. I didn't get anything. I didn't get one. He just looked at me. So uh, I, I had to change it. my mind and went for a Belgium instead. Oh, did you get a 1554? Uh, I think I went for a fat tire. Fat tire? That's a good, yeah. good little You know, uh, my amber. brother, right when I started drinking that beer, we had a a big argument because I thought it was flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, look at the label, dumbass. I think I've called it that too before. Why flat not? tire? That yeah. would be a good name. Flat tire? Sure it would. Yeah. But fat tire, you know, that was the big bicycle on the label. Yeah, but you know what? If you're drinking, you'd probably be safest with a flat tire because you're not going to drive anywhere. Well, if you're drinking, you're probably going to say flat tire. Yeah. Even though you mean fat tire. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Both. <laughs> so, uh, I was going to mention this. This is really doesn't have any, it's not important. But we were talking last time about songs named after women's names. And another one. Yes, I've, we were. And I said I always loved a theme and by I, the I, Who. I thought of another one. We didn't. Me mention. too. Go ahead. Allison by. Uh, oh, that's Allison. a great song. Yeah. yeah, I heard that, and I went, man, we didn't mention that's that. That's a really good one. It's a think great it song. Uh, another one I love is Valerie by Steve Winwood. You know, you know that one. Yeah, you that's know the monkeys had song. a Valerie too. That's right. They call her <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> I love her, man. It's like Davy Jones with the high. Hello, oh, right? <laughs> you almost got a rock boom, 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 boom. <laughs> She's the same old girl that I used to know next door. Da, 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 something like that. <laughs> but she Down looks the different street. than da, da, da. the way she looked before. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's a good one. What'd man. you think about that guitar solo on that song? Remember that one? Oh. <laughs> I bet you it's Tommy Tedesco. You think so? Yeah, I bet you it is. I think it is. Um, I'll I'll find out. You want me to look it up real quick? No. Why not? Okay, I'll look it up later. <laughs> yeah, look it up. Later. I've I've uh, I didn't. I went to a Tommy Tedesco. Sounds like something you would put on your chili beans. Is one of the most. It does. <laughs> yeah, I'll have the <laughs> the chili with it. side of Tommy Tedesco. He is an amazing um, session player, studio player. He's played on almost everything you've ever heard. I mean, you've heard him. I met him. I didn't really meet him. I went to a clinic. And he is such a just clever guy. You know, he was the first guitarist I ever heard say, well, just buy yourself a banjo and tune it like a guitar. Buy yourself a dulcimer or whatever. Tune them all like a guitar because when I go to the union, I, cons I am considered a multi-instrumentalist, even though I'm playing everything in guitar tuning. Hmm. And another thing he did, which I thought was brilliant, he told a story about, he was recording music for something, probably a movie soundtrack. And, um, oh, he said he would always do this. He said when they would say, like, I want fingerstyle guitar, he would say, well, do you want, and he'd say, like, Colombian or Nicaraguan fingerstyle. He'd say something like that just to throw the director off, <laughs> just so he was always the authority. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought, that's brilliant. And he's like, there's no such thing. But I just say it so the director, uh, I don't know. Another one he did, which I thought was great, and I'll stop the Tommy Tedesco story. Oh, that's okay. Go, Tommy. He said he was playing something. I believe he's playing Nylon String of the Pick. And they played it. They got the take. And the engineer said, uh, I wasn't too fond of it. Can you do it without a pick? And he said, sure. And he said he did it with a pick a second time. And they said, that was perfect. That was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the uh, sound people do that all the time. You know, you're, you're, you're this way. You're at a show and you go, "Man, could you turn that up a little bit?" And they they go, they don't do anything, and they go, "How's that?" And they go, "Oh, great, thanks." That's perfect. <laughs> That's absolutely perfect. So he was a very clever. <laughs> I clever remember guy. that reminds me. Oh. Years ago, we in a band we were playing it. <laughs> <laughs> one of the guys in the band, one of the singers, he said, could you put some more reverb on my voice? <laughs> and he went, thank you. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> <laughs> it just was that much. <laughs> he put a lot on, you know. He <laughs> said, you okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> we need to have that effect on here. You know, that's a segment I've always thought we should have. Um, we all, we must have between you and me, I mean, dozens of just stupid band stories. You know what I mean? Everybody does. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I? you know, it's just your life. Whatever you do, if yeah. you're a, if you're a 
if you're a painter, you have dozens yeah. of stupid painter stories. But that's what makes <laughs> movies like Spinal Tap so funny because you've seen Spinal Tap, I'm sure. All the stupid stuff that happens to them kind of happens to you on a lower level. Um, even uh, there's a scene in that thing you do, which I know you haven't seen yet. Where the bass player is like jumping up and down because he's excited about something, and his guitar strap just bo- falls off. You know, the the whole bass falls off him, and I'm like, oh my god, that's happened to me or people I've known. Oh just yeah, I, stuff like I, that. I cracked a, a guitar one time against the wall, acting oh, stupid, man. and busted the side of the guitar. Broke my heart. It was a Martin guitar. Oh man. Oh man. Good friend of mine, Trey Brewer. He's a good friend. I hope he's listening. He said one time, I think he said. He was running up the stairs with his acoustic in one hand, and it and it hit the the banister and went right through it. Ah, oh, well, that's what happened to me. I was running. Like I was running, oh, and, yeah. and my knee hit the guitar, and the guitar goes against the wall and cracks. Was, I'm sorry. I thought made me think of Forrest Gump when he said, "I was running." That's why I'm laughing. I was I'm running. Not, I was not. <laughs> I had a guitar named Jenny, and I was running. <laughs> Anyways. We got a lot of stuff coming up. You know what we'll do? Let's get Steve Goody in here. He's on his way. And uh, let's go to a quick word from our sponsor. Then we'll come back and talk to Mr. Steve Goody, get some songs out of him, get our Imperial Ale started, get a word from Jack. All that good stuff. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Let's have a quick word from our sponsor. We'll be right back with Mr. Steve Goody. Goody. (laughs) Folks, you know what place has everything you need? Amazon.com. They've got it all. They have books that we featured on this show, including Tennessee Chicken from Chicken Will Dodson. They've got Randy Mosher's book on tasting beer. They've got great CDs by Danica Holmes, which we featured on this show. And they got fashion. And they got automotive supplies, electronics. Everything's at Amazon.com. And when you shop there, you can support our show. Just go to our page first, at thehops.com. Click on any Amazon link, and when you go to Amazon, we will also get a little jingle in our pocket as you get a wonderful product that you want. It won't cost you anything extra, no extra shipping, no nothing. You just support our show by clicking on any Amazon link at atthehops.com. So please, when you do your shopping at Amazon, you know you're going to do it, jump to atthehops.com first, find any Amazon link, Click and make us happy as we make you happy every week. Cheers, everybody. Happy shopping. All right, we're back, and our guest is right here in the house. You guys probably know him from either The Fump, one of the science Dr. Domeno show, maybe even Howard Stern's show, maybe Zany's, maybe The Bluebird. He's everywhere. He's the one and only Steve Goody is in the house with Yay. us. Yeah. Oh, that applause After, feels so good. Yeah. Oh, wait, we got more. We got this. Sweet. <laughs> that's more what I'm used to. That's, that's, that's exactly yeah. what happens. They that's love exactly you. They love yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Steve, man, you've got mucho credits. Yeah. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. I was just saying to you when you got here, you got, what, 20-something albums, and you said 26 mm-hmm. now? Working on 27. 20, well, of course, yeah. Going for the next one, comedy mm-hmm. albums, and all of them still selling up to your oldest ones. Uh, not so much. The oldest ones, I don't think I've sold one in quite some time, but you never know. They're still there. They're there. You can buy one. Which ones sell the most now? Um, I think the one that has sold the most is called Welcome to Stupid Country. Because it has the NASCAR song on it. Very popular, the NASCAR yeah, they, song. Yeah, people like, the, they, they seem to like that one. I, I've seen, um, I one night saw you at the Belcourt Taps playing the NASCAR song, and some woman decided she had to dance crazy at the entire, <laughs> the entire song. I don't know if you remember I remember, this. my mom was a little drunk, and uh, <laughs> oh, so it was yes, his things mom? happen. <laughs> It happened, but that, that's been a, uh, that one, there's a Harry Potter song that's been a regular staple. Uh-huh. Yeah, I re- I've written in my time, no, not one, not two, but 23 songs about Harry Potter, which is a complete stupid waste of time. The third one I ever wrote is called Harry's Wand, which is a parody of Stacy's Mom oh. by Fountains of Wayne back yeah. in 2002, I believe. And I heard that song for the first time at a party, and I just had been reading Harry Potter. I thought, Harry's Wand, that sounds like Stacy's Mom. So I recorded it, and it became a big hit on what was then XM Kids. It's now serious, but uh, it's still oh, a kids' yeah. channel. For 13 weeks, I was top of the charts on the kids' channel. No kidding. It was huge. And I still 
still make a little money every three months or so. And they get to play that. that. What happens when you do a parody song like that? Because you're using, obviously, Stacey's mom, uh-huh. right? Somebody well, else. How does that work? Well, first, uh, first, a lot of litigation. And then after you win, you're fine. Uh, seriously, most um, people are aware that you're allowed to parody just about anything. Uh, the, the courts favor the parodist over the original artist and writer and publisher because parody is considered fair use. However, oh, all royalties from Airplay go to the original composer and publisher, not to the parodist, unless you get permission in advance, which is what Weird Al is smart enough to do. He always gets permission before he does anything. That makes him a co-writer, and he can collect royalties on the work. I don't do that because, A, nobody will return my phone calls, and, B, I don't care. <laughs> so um, I just parody away, uh, and until... Until about then, 2003, there was no money to be made from airplay. But then something called Sound Exchange happened, which yeah. is a par- it's a uh, royalty collection agency for the artist, not for the writer or the publisher, but for the artist. And in this case, I am the artist. So I have not collected any writing or publishing royalties from Harry's Wand, but I have collected uh, artist royalties, which is real nice. So if you're not part of Sound Exchange and your music is being heard anywhere at all, you should check out Sound Exchange. I should check it out. You should check I'm not it out. It now. Chaz, come on. I know. And I've had songs um, used on other podcasts, mm-hmm. like uh, jingles and stuff, mm-hmm. even some comedy stuff. Heck yeah. Why not? Right? Why not? Unless uh, you don't like money. I love money. I, I, that's I, what I've heard. You would think I didn't because <laughs> I get rid of it every time I get a hold of some, but, but I actually You're like losing it. money right now. I am, Probably. <laughs> You're also, uh, one thing I've said, and I don't want to get too serious, but... Okay, let's get serious. Let's get somewhat serious. Hold on, serious. I need a beverage. Sure. Okay, oh, and on. we're going to have some really fancy beverages soon. But, you know, um, I think a lot of people think that comedy is easy. And I look at what you do. Like, I've seen you perform at the Bluebird numerous times. Numerous. Yeah. And some of the songs you do, I'm in awe that you're able to play them. Because <laughs> they're not... This is not just... Um, it's not just something you threw together. The, like the Harry mm-hmm. Potter song is a mouthful to sing and play at the same time and to not stumble over. And even the NASCAR song, mm-hmm. uh, the one you do about uh, the, you know, the old Blackwater one, mm-hmm. there's a lot gone. There's a lot of rehearsal in this, right? That is true. Uh, for the really fast songs, the ones that are really full of lyrics, like the Harry Potter one you're yeah. referring to, it's called Dumbledore. Um, when I wrote that, I never intended to perform that. It's a parody, actually, you may or may not know this, of an original song by Weird Al Yankovic oh, called Hardware Store. In his song, he's just excited that they're opening a hardware store down the street. It's not open yet, but I can't wait. And he lists all the things he's going to buy when they finally open the doors. And I heard that song for the first time, I believe it was probably 2004, and listened to it over and over and over and didn't try to memorize it, but it's just this amazing song. And then it occurred to me, Dumbledore sounds like Hardware oh, Store. Yeah. Uh, and I started writing, and again, never intended to perform it, but I did get, I actually contacted Al's people and got permission to parody. That's the only people I've ever asked for and gotten permission was Al. He said that's okay. his people. He said, okay. Um, he had a couple provisions. He said there can't be anything dirty, and I'm like, okay, that's not a problem. So how do you contact his these people? Is it? Well, in his case, I'd already spoken with his management, I think, years before, and I can't even remember why, but Jay Levy is his manager, and I had his email address. So I contacted him, and he cleared it with Al, and that was cool. So I wrote it and recorded it, and it's way too fast. The song, the original song goes that fast. I don't think, I don't think Al performs that one live. I, I may be wrong about that, but I suspect it's just way too much effort to do that. And I didn't mean to either, but then I thought, okay, I'll try, and it took months. Months of just going over and over and over in the shower, mostly. Yeah. And I was very clean those couple of months, more than <laughs> usual. Just kept going over and over the lyrics and practicing and practicing and screwed it up many times in front of audiences. And to this day, I don't think I've ever done it 100% correctly. There's always some little stumble in there. There's a particular part in the bridge where the words, there's Snape's acidic sneer. That's one of the lyrics. Professor Snape's acidic sneer is one of the things that you can find at Hogwarts. Yeah. It's impossible to say that, let alone Snape's sing it. Not, I get it. Yeah, I don't, I could have rewritten that to be a little more singable. But anywho... Yeah, a lot of practice to get that one done. Not all my songs are that fast. In fact, slower ones like like the Elvis thing that yeah. I either already did or that I'm going to do soon. It oh, depends on how we'll, you we'll edit put this. put it on later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it, the one I'm going to do. It's done. The one you're going to do so in the future. It's so slow I can't get it right. I, I'm so used to just hammering out words that when mm-hmm. it goes slow, I lose my mind. See, Was Weird Al a big influence on you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Was he not a big influence on you? 
I'm not a big ah, Weird Al fan. I gotta go. And I should be, probably, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you should. I don't know. I, it never... I, Mike? <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about, a no, lot about Mike, him. I think about the uh, Nirvana uh-huh. thing that he did, you know. Yeah. But... Uh, other than that, I'm not. I'm not no. aware. Well, he's of only been at it for 32 years, so it's yeah. not surprising he hasn't caught up with you yet. Well, <laughs> no, but for com- like for comedy and music, I mean, the Smothers Brothers to me is always oh, a classic. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think my favorite part is, in any Smothers Brothers is when uh, which one is uh, which? Oh wait, I think it's Tommy's like, the dumb one. Tom, yeah, Tommy and Dickie goes take it, and Tommy <laughs> goes no. no. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You got to take it. It's in the folk <laughs> no. singer manual. Yeah, you, when someone says take it, you take it. He knows. You know my heart. You know my heart. That's one of the, the one of my favorite moments in any music. Mm-hmm. I, I always try yeah. to do it. Uh, well, I do it when I'm playing a song and I have a solo mm-hmm. and I can't do it. I go take it to someone in the audience and they always. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay, give it back. Yeah, give it back. <laughs> oh, I should use. You that. should have that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it back. We should actually hear one of Steve's songs. Let's do that. Let's do and that. Then let's get a, a beer and then we'll talk to you more about the comedy writing. Okay, Chaz. Let's go in here. Uh, the Tom, the Tom, uh, the Tom Petty. Oh, the Pedley. The Pedley. Indeed. I got to get the name right because once the people on the podcast listening hear the song, they're going to know how hysterical you are. If they don't know <laughs> you already, then they're going to want to hear more. Okay. Let's do that and let's come back and grab a drink. Actually, when you hear the song, <laughs> we're going to hear a little track from our good friend Jack, and That's then we're going to get some beer. Sound good? Awesome. All right, we're in. Well, you need the Pedley is what you need. Since you've oh, not I'd heard love it. To hear it. Because people say to me all the time, they say, Steve, you must be a big fan of Tom Petty. Because you kind of sound like him. And you kind of look like him. That's what they say. Don't they agree with me? I, of course. Yes. Absolutely. So, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I'm a huge Tom Petty fan. To the point where I've actually come up with a medley of my favorite Tom Petty songs. So, uh, which I affectionately call the Pedley. So I'm going to do that for you now. And there is some sing-along in here. Oh, so when yeah. I point at you, you'll know what to do. It'll come right out. And oh, yeah, just, just be, be on your toes. So there you go. I don't know that the headphones are really going to help you. But if that, yeah, just put on whatever protective equipment you need. <laughs> I've never heard anybody panic before. <laughs> We come from monkeys, we all know it We don't talk too much about it Ain't no real big secret We came down from the trees And now we're grounded Tommy, you have got some really big teeth, buddy I believe you got thumbs on your feet Cause you know that you look like a chimpanzee Thank you, look you like a chimpanzee. Beautiful. Somewhere, somehow, somebody must have swung you around, son. Who knows, maybe his fire came to the jungle, kidnapped you, told it to an org grinder, made you wear that stupid hat and dance around, son. Tommy, please don't take it personally, buddy. You don't sing too articulately, and you know that you look like a chimpanzee No, that you look like a chimpanzee yeah. I was like the Mormon Tabernacle softball team My sister's new husband was also her cousin They found out when she gave birth True story Cause when chromosomes linger You get extra fingers It's natural selection in reverse so what caused these flaws? Was it a lack of in-laws? Wow, you're inbred. One eyebrow across your head. When kin folk wed, you're inbred. banjos by myself <laughs> without a banjo well I think I'll go and rent me a movie right now go and get something I ain't never seen and on the discount rack I see deliverance and I'm watching it now and they got to that scene where they meet the hillbillies and they're big and they're mean and who's that crawling round on his 
it's Ned Beatty. 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 Ned Beatty had the hardest part. If you got a pretty mouth, you can be a big star. I guess the next day his agent got fired. But Beatty had the hardest part. <laughs> End of Pedley. That's the fact, Jack! Hey there, friends. It's your old pal, Jack. And I'm back with some more tips. Tips on beer and on beer tasting. You know, every once in a while, you may notice you pick up an ale that's got the word imperial on the label. I'm talking about imperial stouts, imperial IPAs, or maybe even an imperial pilsner. And you may ask yourself, well, what the hell is making this brew so imperial? Well, let me tell you, the tradition actually goes back to the 1800s. Back then, a lot of brewers in England would whip up some extra special batches of their beer for the Imperial Court of Russia. That's right, they were exporting that stuff and they wanted it to be top of the line. A lot of times in these days it was stouts. But in today's brewing society, you'll see brewers making imperial runs of all kinds of beers. Like I said, IPAs, stouts, maybe even a pilsner. So what does this mean? It's going to be an extra ramped up, amped up edition. It's a lot like that Barry Bonds guy. It's on steroids, if you know what I mean. It's going to have a lot more hops, a lot more malts, and it's also going to pack a pretty darn good alcoholic punch. You'll find them everywhere at your breweries and at your local beer store. So be on the lookout. Get yourself an IPA and then get yourself an Imperial IPA and see if you can take on the extra punch that comes with an Imperial brew. And that is the Fact Jack. All right, we're back. I think everyone's back. The bottle opens. Mike, are you back? I'm back. Steve, you back? I'm back. He's back. We've got beer in our hands. We're going to hear. We've got an Imperial IPA from Green Flash since Jack just told us about everything we need to know about an Imperial style ale. Of course, it's going to be ramped up, amped up on steroids, basically. So are you familiar with normal IPAs, Steve? I'm learning everything I know about it right now. (laughs) Excellent. Traditionally, your IPA No better place. No better place. (laughs) It's a pretty hoppy beer because... uh, IPAs are India Pale Ales mm-hmm. from the days when uh, in England, when they used to ship beer over to India, when they colonized India, they had to put a lot of hops in it to keep it you know, from stable. going bad. Thank you, from going bad. I couldn't think of that. Those I got words. them technical terms right here. Yeah, from going bad. And so they, they, <laughs> they put a lot of hops in there, and then people decided they liked it. So it became an India Pale Ale. I mean, that's the story that you're told. That's like that's you know, the story I was just told. It was. <laughs> that's the story I've heard since I was a, since I was a wee beer drinker, <laughs> and I still go by today. So, uh, we beer. It- <laughs> yeah, and we tell it every yeah. week. <laughs> that's also a French term, I think. Wee beer drinker. So, uh, you know. Oh boy. So this is going to be extra hoppy, probably, right? Extra. Should I'm, take, be. I'm taking a whiff right now. Yeah, that's one of our first. Ooh, steps. there's a lot of hops in there. You can already smell it. It's hoptastic. We're going to hear a little song that tells us our big steps of beer tasting. All right. Uh, and uh, you got to do the, it in order. Yeah, you kind of went out of order there, but that's okay. The I'm first sorry. step involves, if you listen here. You just want to look at it and describe the um, color, the texture you see. You might say, like, this one's very clear. Blondie. B- blondie, th- yeah, kind of blonde. It's the Pale. color of very old scotch tape. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very old scotch tape, too. Very little head on it. No bubbles, really. No carbonation going on there. Maybe tiny just bit. A bit. Actually, just there a is bit. a little bit now that I look closely. This it's is the like, first time you've looked at this sober, isn't it? It is. It's like sea monkeys. You don't see them right away, and mm-hmm. then suddenly they appear. That's kind of it. And a lot of times, you know, some beers will have sediment in there. You always want to say that, like a hazy look. 
you see sediment that? really yeah sediment I there's hate sand it. in my beer is that what sediment is i don't know <laughs> here's our second step <laughs> your favorite <laughs> sediment would go to the bottom that's, that's take that's a generally sniff a... okay sniff the sediment goes bottom. that is hopped up it smells like hoppy sentiment sentiment and sediment well, it's valentine's I don't know what day sediment yeah valentine's is in two days from this taping, yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be before... <laughs> two you. days from this old scotch taping. <laughs> It'll be before or after we put this out, but... Is this the Valentine still, special? No, we kind of did that last week. Oh, did Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember <laughs> I now. was not alerted. <laughs> you were here. We did all the songs about women's there bands you go. and stuff. There you go. I remember. We even wrote a song. Yeah, yeah. Mike tends to sleep through these. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the third stuff, which is... Let's have a taste. Ah, uh, yes. Cheers, guys. Here we go. Steve, wow. thanks for coming to the show. Mm-hmm. And that... How does that taste to a non-drinker? It tastes like... It tastes like beer. That's what it's supposed to taste like, right? Yeah. Yeah. But real. I mean, this... So I hated my first beer. I, this is yeah. not your very first beer. No, sure. sir. Because I hated my first beer. <laughs> I don't hate this. It's no, it's good. But, but you it's, always had to act like you liked it. Mm-hmm. You Otherwise, you're yeah. not cool. Right. It's like choking on a cigarette. You can't be doing there it. You exactly. Go. Yeah. I felt the same way about that. Uh, yeah. The Dukes of Hazard. When I was a kid, <laughs> your first you had to pretend, episode. All the all you the told kids, everybody you liked it. <laughs> no, all the kids at school loved it, and if you didn't like it, you were like an outcast. But to me, I thought it was a stupid show <laughs> because I had relatives that were kind of like. Bo and Luke and now you know how wrong you <laughs> were. Yeah. You've so acquired the a, taste. Did they have a car like that? Uh, they were lucky. It was usually on blocks, whatever they had. But I hated that show. And, <laughs> With and the flag. Like, it's great. With it's the, the flag on top. Yeah, they loved it. Did you want... Oh, of course that, I did. I don't know what generation you're in, Steve, so I was curious. Well, it's yeah, not yeah, polite to youthful. ask a feller how old he is. But yes, I do remember the Dukes of Hazard very well. Great show. I was in the demographic. You were there for that one. I was. What did you grow up watching? What that and Scooby Doo and Scooby-Doo. Batman, the real series, you know, Adam West. Okay, yeah. I was getting ready to ask which and one. Yeah. Far too much Brady Bunch. <laughs> oh my God. We'd come home from school every day and just turn that on. Could not get enough. And now I cannot get through an episode. It's so it's, stupid. It's really it's bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. Can you I don't care how much huge? craft beer you have, it's still bad. <laughs> Didn't they have a Brady Bunch reunion not they too had long many ago? Of those. Most of the kids are dead. Yeah. Are they dead? <laughs> They're not dead. I don't think. Wait, dad, dad is dead, and Alice Robert died not too dad. long ago. Oh, Alice. And dad is gay. You, you know, we didn't he know was. that. Yeah. We didn't know that. They were ahead of their time, and they mm-hmm. didn't know. Yeah, it was the first, you know. Yeah, they were ahead of their time in being in the closet. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what are some of these shows? But they still had a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to. I mean. <laughs> okay, we're getting into a weird area. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, oh, by the way, I'll just mention the taste. This is extremely hopped up. I mean, sometimes you, you get an IPA, you taste it on the fr- after you swallow it, mm-hmm. this one you is taste soon it, as you, you taste it drink. before you swallow. You taste it before you get in the room. Yeah, this is yeah. Don't drink this if you want to. You know, if you're taking a break at work, want to go out a few wrong few beers, This is not yeah. a good Did one. Did we to mention drink, the alcohol content? It's what gonna. Is this it's this at one? nine point zero, Ooh. so it's up there. That means and, you got to be careful. And the IBUs, which are inter, uh, what is that actually? Bitterness units. <laughs> I think that's what it stands <laughs> really? for. Really? Yeah, international bittering units. IBU is up to one hundred one. I would say, Steve, most of your IPAs that are real hoppy, it's like 60. This, so this is considerably is, higher. It's considerably higher. Yeah. And you don't have to be a mathematician to do that math. You know, this is high up there. That is. So am I. 66% higher. They say you will taste unearthed savory pine, evergreen, and pineapple aromas and experience colossal rush of a hoppy adventure. You should have this on Easter if it's going to be that hoppy. Oh, I like that. I think I might. Yeah. Bring we it back to life, back too. To Easter. Yeah. Hey, talk about some of these shows you're on. Dr. Demento's on NPR. Well, Had, Dr. Demento, right? the and NPR what? thing, it's a little confusing. Uh, oh. I think it was in 2010 that NPR did a story about Dr. Demento. Ah, Dr. Okay. Demento, for the longest time, was syndicated across the country on many different local channels on, their, on your radio dial. Uh, over the years, they have come, the, the numbers have dropped so much so that he's not on terrestrial radio anymore. He's only online at drdemento.com. In 2010, NPR did a story about him, and he talked about the history of his own career and of the musicians and comedians that he has featured on the show, and included me. And so he played a little bit of one of my songs in this special, which was on NPR. 
I see. So that's mean. where that all comes from. Which song did he play? I forget. Oh. <laughs> really? He didn't like go listen <laughs> to it a hundred times? Go to stevegoody.com and look it up. I think the whole, the whole special is right there. <laughs> oh, we will look it up. Yeah, blame me for not doing my research. And Howard Stern featured you mm-hmm. as well. In that had 2000, to be I think it was 2004 when uh, Bush was up for re-election and Howard gave a call to the, uh, all, as many anti-Bush songs as could be entered and he played the ones he liked the best in a, in a kind of a medley. So again, it wasn't a whole song, but one of mine was selected, so I was in there. It Doesn't was matter. quite exciting. Cool. How did he get a hold of that? I sent it to him. Oh, oh you did send it. You got to send him in. <laughs> you got to send him in. But then you never know if it's going to get played or not. That's, the, that's, that's true. the magic when they actually pull it out. That go, was back in the days. Works. actually mailed a CD to him. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. So that's not just the it's email. Not, and it's so a lot where, easier now. Where were you when he aired it? Did you, in Los Angeles. Were you listening for it? You knew it I was going to be on? I believe... I don't remember. I, I think I listened to the show not knowing whether I would be in it. Wow. And then heard myself. So that myself. would have been quite a shock. It was pretty exciting. Yeah. Remember that moment in that movie, uh, That Thing You Do, when you, they I hear themselves on the radio and they all go they nuts? Screaming? Yeah, I, yeah I was all by myself. Mike. I couldn't. It was pretty, pretty oh, sad. Oh, you couldn't. You I was still happy. Dance with Liv Tyler. No, Liv Tyler did not show. I know. Can you believe her? I know. She's got some nerve. I was telling Mike that's a great movie. It is a great see movie. It. It'll and make you cry. I gotta watch it. And you have not seen. I have not seen it, dude. I made my daughter watch it recently. He made his daughter yeah. watch. If you and were his daughter, you would have seen it. Oh, yeah. Do you realize? I that? may be your daughter. I don't know. You would have seen that thing you do <laughs> if you were my daughter. I don't know. I hate to say it, but I, I guess I. I tried to avoid it i just didn't think i, I don't know it just tried didn't... to avoid it i thought it was gonna be stupid yeah and i ended up being very good it's really good are you, mike got, do you avoid got... all things that are good yes all I of see. them that's why you're all here. things that are goody we need a drum roll on that one what what you've been doing the bluebird gig for how long now 7.5 years is that right you're as a regular the, as the mc on sundays i'm a fixture i'm a chandelier I mean, Sticking you, out of the wall. Mm-hmm. You're the impression most people leave home. A lot of people come out from out of town wow. on that night. Like, I need this pressure. Well, you're probably the name they remember the most from that. You think that I never say my name? Is that true? <laughs> no, that's I don't true. know. I'm not kidding. I mean, I am kidding. Yeah. I, I sometimes forget to say my name. I try to remember to say my name. But one of the... Has, has that been... Have you ever been mentioned yes. as being a character on the show? Oh, Nashville? No. And I did and use somebody that needs as a to change. Right? Yeah, something needs to change. They've had a couple of they've had an actor who plays an MC of the open mic, uh, and that's on Mondays. And in fact, he is played by my friend Sal Gonzalez, who also works at the Bluebird. So okay. Sal has actually played me sort of on television. He tries to do, and that's what I always thought. You know, I you know. A Jewish kid from Connecticut should be played by a, a, a Mexican Marine veteran. Why not? Living in Nashville. Absolutely. It's like looking in a mirror. Well, that's real acting, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's very good. So I was going to say, does he do a good job of being No, Steve he's terrible. Goody? I no, haven't seen the show. Sal does to watch it. Sal's to watch the best. <laughs> Where in Connecticut are you from, Steve? I was born in Norwalk, Connecticut. We lived oh, there for wow. one year before we left. And then to where? We went to Hamden, Connecticut, where we lived for two years before we left. Then we went to a suburb of Philadelphia for five years. Then we left. We've been kicked out of everywhere. On the road. This is right out of stripes again. It is. We've been kicked out of everywhere. But and then we went to Chicago, where we lived till I went to college. And I went to college in Wisconsin for two years. They told me after two years of school that I had to declare a major. I really couldn't decide. They said, you can design your own major. I said, okay, how about parallel parking? I figured I'd go with my strengths. They said, no. I said, I'm taking a year off. And I hit the road on a motorcycle with a guitar, wandered around the country thinking, I will come back to college if I ever want to. Well, this is the 29th year of my sabbatical. Thank you very much. And you can do the math and figure out how old I am. That's okay. West Coast was involved too, right? You went all the way Not, so, not yet. Not much. I wandered around to see how stupid enough to leave town. On a motorcycle in October. Hey, it's cold. Yeah. So I decided it needed to be Florida or California as soon as possible, and Florida was closer. So I went that way, and I wound up living in Gainesville, Florida for two and a half years. Having, having had no studio experience, I decided I want to work in a recording studio. They had one recording studio in town. I marched in and knocked on the door, and I said, I would like to work for you. I'd like to sweep the floor, clean the bathroom, or answer the phone. They said, no, go away. I was all of 20 years old, so I went away. And then I came back, and I tried again. And they said, no, go away. And I just kept bugging them till one day when I did this. This is I know this is a fascinating story. No, this is great. Part of their business, this was the mid-'80s, was cassette duplication. They had a whole rack full of cassette uh, recorders attached to one cassette player that would make copies of cassettes. This was back before CDs were popular uh, for their clients who needed mass production of cassettes. And they would buy empty cassette shells 
and a big pancake reel of cassette tape, very thin, that you load in using this machine. You, uh, the, the empty cassette shell actually had some leader, that's a blank plastic tape, that's the yellow stuff at the beginning and at the end that you attach to the hubs. Yeah. It had leader in it, you pull that out with a, with a sharp instrument like a pen or a, the point of a compass we used to use. Pull that out, put it on an editing block, cut it in half with a razor blade, splice on a bit of tape from the big pancake reel of tape. In this machine, you can program how many minutes of and seconds of tape you want. So it'd be like, let's say 31 minutes and 12 seconds. Okay, so 31 minutes and 12 seconds, you push the button, it <laughs> rolls all the tape in, and then when it's done, you cut it and rejoin it to the other end of the leader, tighten it up, and you have one cassette. They needed a whole bunch of these made in a big hurry, and they were short on help. So uh, Bob, who would become my boss, said, okay, have you ever edited tape? I said, no. <laughs> he said, oh, here's how you do it. So he sat me down, he shows me how to do it, and within five minutes, he accidentally cuts my thumb open <laughs> with the razor blade. And he felt terrible. So once this run of work was done, he hired me because he just... He felt <laughs> terrible about it. He didn't want to be sued, I'm pretty sure. At so Ga there was one studio in Gainesville. Mm -hmm. Gator Studios. So you think mm -hmm. Tom Petty did some No, work this is there? after his time. The studio was built after he'd already oh, become okay. famous. I'm sorry to say. That would have been cool. I had been... Uh, I went to several parties at what used to be Tom's house. They were called Petty's Past Pad Parties. And they were very exciting. And Tom never showed up. That son of a... Well, he must not have left anything there. He was busy. There, he he was busy yeah. with stuff. What did you? I mean, the music's always been a part of what you do, though. Mm -hmm. So was that first? I mean, was there ever a time when you were just doing serious songs? Or was I, the comedy. Always I don't know a piece if there's a time it? when there were no comedy songs involved. But yes, back back in the '80s, like I was just describing, I wrote a lot of very serious songs that nobody would be interested in, and I recorded them, and I put them out, and then nothing happened. Sounds like and, me. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying, how can I be more like Mike? And that's what I did. <laughs> uh, but in between them, I'm always th I was always thinking of funny stuff or what I hoped was funny. It was, you know, Weird Al and all those other influences. Uh, Alan Sherman, Smothers Brothers, yeah. of course. Uh, just it's funner. It's more fun to be funny than to try and write something emo. This is before that word emo is even a word that nobody will care about. So I just went that way it's a natural. lot more. But mm -hmm. as Chaz said, it's very hard to be funny. It's hard to write. Yeah, but nobody song. listens to Chaz. That's you true. Know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've tried to write a funny song and it turned out not to be funny. I'll it's tell hard you, to write I thought funny all your songs song. were funny. Well, yeah. <laughs> I find it's not any harder to write a funny song than to write a not funny song. It's the same amount of effort whether it becomes funny or not. So do your best, and if it's funny, great, and if it's not, you didn't do anything wrong. It just didn't come out funny. That, that doesn't really mean it's not hard. It just means if you ain't funny... Just by nature, if it does, if funny things just don't occur to you, then it, it's just probably not going to land that way. And if they do, it's that's great. But that it kind of means that you can't be very serious. <laughs> that's the problem I have. How do you do it when you're not in the mood to be? I'm never the in the funny mood. Guy. I'm never in the mood to be funny unless I already was funny. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen After you it on happens, a night when then, you're not. Oh, I'm never in the on. mood. No, I hate it. Really? Yeah, I hate you, and I hate it, and it's it's just a pain in the ass. <laughs> I've never seen. <laughs> I, so you're see. Uh, <laughs> I just gonna say I've never seen when he's off. You're always on, and, well, and even though people will request the same song that I know you've done three thousand times, mm -hmm. like the NASCAR song, mm -hmm. I know you probably played it three thousand times, At least, countless times, yeah. and you're like, oh sure, and you play it. I think it was the first time there you ever played There is no it. point playing it if I'm not going to sell it. And there are little things I know to do in, the, in that particular yes. song or in any particular song that if I hit these beats with a facial expression or just a pause or just a little quirky thing in my voice, that gets a laugh. This makes it sell as if I'd never done it before. So I just do those things. It's, it's acting is what it is. But on the other hand, when I watch somebody laugh at my song, that makes me laugh, even though the song itself no longer makes me laugh. Yeah. So, you know, laughter, comedy is a very social thing. It's very different to sing a funny song for a group of people, particularly if they've never heard it, than to just sing it for one person or someone, a group of people who have heard it, to, to feel them waiting for something. They don't know exactly what you're going to do. The NASCAR song is a pretty long setup before there's a laugh, and you can see them sitting, okay, you going somewhere with this? You better be going somewhere yeah. with this. And I'm in my head, oh, I'm going somewhere with this. You don't, don't worry, I got you. And then when it does get there, oh, okay, that's funny. I'm really glad you did that. Yeah, I like think all, per, all performance is that way, though. You know, to some extent, the yeah. working yeah. off the audience. Yeah. I mean, you can, you know, even when you're playing a song, you, you can tell when the audience is with you, and, and it makes you get into that it a lot true, more. That is true, but they may not react in an audible way. They may react by the way they're looking at you, it, or by moving a little bit, exactly. if they're really digging the groove or whatever it is. Yeah, they usually but, leave when I play. <laughs> yeah. But a comedian, if, if you're not hearing laughs, you're failing, and mm -hmm. it needs to happen every few seconds. Right. And that's, that's the difference. But Isn't that fascinating? No, it's it's extremely. No, fascinating. I can appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah. one thing 
that you mentioned is it's it's hitting those cues on that because you know, I think there's a lot of people that think they have to play something different every time. And it's not necessarily the difference doesn't mean the performance. The difference might be the reaction of the crowd mm -hmm. that it kind of inspires the next step, too. Because like you said, you hit a lot of marks. And I've seen you. I've seen you do the NASCAR song a few times. And I know there's, I, I can't recall right now, there's a few mm -hmm. marks you always hit. Mm -hmm. You make them sound like it's the first time you've ever cool. said it. Thanks. Which is try. outstanding. But it gets me every time, too. I laugh every time. <laughs> well, you're Even not too I go, bright. I know it's yeah, well, that's you know. true. <laughs> <laughs> what are your the less intelligent of the, of the that's listeners. right the, but, you're my demographic exactly <laughs> but there is something to do in that and to realizing mm -hmm. that it's it's getting that reaction but there are people. also different things that happen it's not like i must do it to the script every time part of the fun is hitting those marks but also being ready for something that you don't yeah. expect one of my favorite examples of that is um doing the nascar song uh, before I did it, I happened to have been talking to the audience and there was someone there from Australia and we chatted a little bit about the differences, you know, drive on the right, ha, ha, ha. Make yeah. sure you drive on the right because it's America. So I'm doing the NASCAR song and I, I get to the, I get halfway through it and all of a sudden it just occurs to me and I had not planned this out. I just stopped dead and I talked to her, the Australian. I said, in Australia, do the NASCAR drivers go around the other way? <laughs> and <laughs> boom, yeah, it was great. Like, man, you're a genius. And the trick is to then remember where you were in the song and jump back in. And get back. And I've, yeah. I have failed to do that in the past, but that time I happened to make a note in my head, remember to jump back in here. So that you, was fun. Do you make a note every time you perform in your head about how your performance was? Are you a critiquing um, person of yeah, your own? Yeah, and, and very rarely do I go, okay, that's how that was supposed to go. Um, usually I'm pretty satisfied with it. Sometimes things just suck. But uh, for the most part, it's in the middle like you might expect. Occasionally, I nail something and like, okay, there. Nailed it the way you mm -hmm. wanted to hear. I always or think that it, the best perform or performance is always, uh, I don't know, about 50% of how well you can do it in rehearsal alone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, my feeling for how I, if I nailed it or not isn't necessarily how well did I do my job. It was how well did they react. If, you know, if I play the song exactly the same way three times and one time it gets a huge response, that's the one I nailed it, even though I did the exact same thing. Yeah. So very true. And also, and also, maybe we should go to a song before we mention it. I was say, because you do some other projects too. Mm -hmm. Well, you play as an instrumentalist too for people around town. Yes, I do. I know you've been doing some touring with Jenny Casey too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've been Is following that still me. going on. Um, yeah. no, although she, we did two tours in Europe last year and I believe she's going back this year, but I don't know that I'm going with her because of schedule conflicts. Now were you just so we will see. playing, I was playing guitar with her the first time. Them. And then the second time I wound up playing guitar and drums and I believe I think uh, some mandolin, mandolin and some bass. Yeah. I, I saw I, a picture. Yeah. There was, was a picture. She, was she tour on her own playing her own, or will she have a band? Or? There's a band of musicians in Switzerland, which is where we primarily were last year, who on our second go round rehearsed with us and learned these songs. So although they may or may not really remember them <laughs> by the time she gets there again, they, they have played with her and they can study up and learn them. And I'm not really required, although it sure is fun to go over there and play music. So you're not doing Steve Goody songs, only Jenny songs. Not in that case. Yeah. Also a very funny artist mm -hmm. that we should we should have on the show. You should have her on this show, and she likes beer. She does. Oh, yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. I remember I, mean, I played a lot of rounds with her back in the Barefoot Charlie's days. Oh, yeah? Before she had a guitar yeah. that, that she liked, and we'd mm -hmm. always be loaning Jenny a guitar. <laughs> that was the thing. That's funny. I did not know that. Yeah, she was like the... Uh, she's played everybody's guitar. I don't know what that... <laughs> just about... But yeah, she never had one. So that the no Steve Goody songs in that. It's strictly the Jenny. That Casey was strictly mix. her. I was a hired hand, and you know there are worse ways to spend a couple of weeks than to be in Europe oh, in I... July. That's all right. No, it just says it's a testament to your virtuosity. Exactly, that's what I said. It's a testament to my virtuosity. Because uh, what some people don't realize is you don't just strum guitar. You play guitar. You play other stringed instruments. You play piano as well. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen you do that before. You run a studio and record other people. I certainly yeah, do. Yeah, and you do all the instruments for uh -huh. them. Right? Almost always, yeah. yeah. That's the reason I'm a good deal is because I can be the whole band. They don't have to rehearse with a band. They don't have to hire a band. They don't have to worry about the band schedules. They just come in with a song. And I put down the tracks and they sing it or they hire a singer and then we're done. The day yeah. you make that offer with writing the song and everything included, I'm going to be Sorry? your first customer. Oh. <laughs> the day the offer extends to, I'll write the song for you and everything. <laughs> okay. Just put your name on it. Great that's, idea. That's a great I'll, idea. I'll I can write a Chaz song. They're not that hard. They're not. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> Three chords and a rhyme. That's it. And, <laughs> and they do the rhyme, the same thing again and again and again. They don't really rhyme. Yeah, that okay. should be easy. Nobody rhymes anymore. That I pisses know. me off. I man. know. You can rhyme car with fire. That's yeah. fine. My uh, daughter gets mad at me because I get mad at Katy Perry. I go, she doesn't rhyme. She doesn't rhyme. <laughs> yeah, but, like, yeah, but dad, she's Katy Perry. I know. That's what my daughter says. Mm -hmm. I go, but that, it doesn't rhyme. Don't you realize so it? So what, dad? God. It's breaking Grandpa. the Grandpa. 
Oh, yeah, exactly, Grimp. Let's go hear another song, Stephen. Should we Yay. hear the other? Do you want to hear the? Uh, should we hear the tender one, or should we hear something off one of your CDs? Whatever you can, think. Can we play the NASCAR song? Is you it sure on can. The CDs. Since it we're is. Talking about it. It absolutely is. A question about the twenty-six CDs: Are they all mm. music, or do you have any stand-up comedy? The first mixed? one has stand-up on it and music, and everything else is just music. Okay. A couple of them are, are quote unquote greatest hits. So really, there are some repeats in there, but I would say twenty three of the twenty six CDs are unique. Nice. So That's, you uh, one a year usually? Is yeah, I try for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I started when I was about how old was I? I think I was about twenty two. So I have until I'm seventy two. I want to make fifty CDs. That's fine. Cool. I'm a little ahead of schedule, bad. actually. You then yeah. you can have a Steve Goody box set. Wouldn't that be great? I already have that, yeah. Do you Maybe really? Well, it's a half-empty <laughs> box, but still, it's a box set. A shoe box. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get a box set with just my one CD in there. Yeah. <laughs> just put it in a box. <laughs> yeah. What's the problem? It's jazz put, in a box. Or put 50 exactly. copies. Put 50 copies in it. There you go. Sure. They're not going to listen to it. What do they with care? your friends. You can play it more than once. <laughs> All right, let's go hear the NASCAR. So I'm going to come back, get another beer. And uh, hey, we'll do a top six list with Steve. If you Excellent. Want to yeah. I don't fun. even know what that is. We'll oh, find you'll out learn. Okay. He's a big fan of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Russell watched TV after his high school graduation. Three solid months of ESPN. Till his daddy told him, son, that's the end of your vacation. Go get a job. Or we're gonna charge you rent So Russell got a job Got fired that same day A cashier he wasn't meant to be Well he went back to the couch Turned on the race and he said Hot damn, now there's the job for me So Russell got alone and went to NASCAR school Where the future NASCAR drivers Learn the one big NASCAR rule Straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. This ain't rocket science, you can learn it in one day. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. It's just like brain surgery, if you take the brain away, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Drive round. And round and round and round and later you get paid. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Drive round and round and round and round and later you get lots of money. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. This ain't English lit. You don't gotta write a thesis. But if you make a wrong turn, you're going right to Jesus. So go. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. Go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight, take a left, take a left, go straight. I think I hit the wall. I'm on fire. Hey there, Mr. Chazzy. This is your old friend Jack from over on the West Coast. Listen, I just wanted to call you and thank you. I went to your site at thehops.com, and from there I discovered a link to audible.com. That's right, audible.com, where they have over 100,000 audio downloads to choose from. I can listen to all my favorite books, and you know that's good for me because I read about, well, about one million scripts a day, and after reading for so long, well, I'm just crazy. I don't have time to read for pleasure anymore, but with audible.com, I can listen to my favorite titles. And for clicking through your link, Chaz, they gave me a 30-day free trial membership and one free audio download. Or maybe it's because I'm a celebrity. Who knows? Anyway, got myself a good book on beer. I could be a guest on your show soon. What do you say? I already got some musical talent. Here, let me get you a little sample. All work and no play. Yeah, makes Jack a dome boy. All work and no play. Yeah, makes Jack a dome boy.
Click on the link at www.atthehops.com for audible.com, where you'll find over 100,000 audiobooks and more. Sign up for the free 30-day trial membership, and you'll get a free audiobook for your listening pleasure as well. To this segment, and hey, we're back on. Here's I hope I can remember it. Jeez. I just said we're back on before telling anybody I'm turning on the recorder. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. back. It's like we never left. And, uh, and Steve just thought of a drinking song he might have to do for us, which I is unscheduled. I got a drinking song. As we go into our second beer to judge tonight, this one's from... Did I say what the last beer was from? Green you know, I, every, every song I do is a drinking song. <laughs> I always have to drink before I do it. Every it's, book you read is a, so, read, a drinking book. <laughs> Most right. activities I've, I've done... I mean, I have... Drinking children. If you think. <laughs> <laughs> drinking girlfriends. Yeah, drinking girlfriends. Drinking where do you think love. the children come from? <laughs> yeah, you know. They always say, Dad, where's, where do kids come from? And I, Budweiser. Budweiser. Yeah, it's Budweiser. in the there you go. right there. Imperial children. We're having a, now a <laughs> bourbon barrel-aged imperial stout from Schlafly. Did I mention the last one is from Green Flash Brewing Company? I hope so. I that think was, you did. That's a big okay, part okay. of your job. Jeez, gotta, I know. I'm going to lose all, my, all of our sponsors that don't pay us anything. <laughs> Bourbon Barrel Aged Imperial Stout from Schlafly, which is out in St. Louis, Missouri. I've been there. It's a good brewery. Aren't so all the breweries in St. Louis? No, you know a lot of them now. All the craft On breweries. The West, Coast. West Coast. And yeah. we got a bunch here, Steve. The West Nashville. Coast has the craft beer. <laughs> There's the new song. <laughs> Hops yeah, grow they're... wild and free. <laughs> <laughs> America spells yeah. beer. K-R-A-F-T. <laughs> Yeah, the breweries, there are a lot of brewers here in Nashville. Yeah, we got Fat Bottom. Yazoo. Tennessee Brew. Oh, I love Yazoo. Tennessee Brew Works. Um, what else? Jackalope. Uh, cool Springs. Blackstone. Hmm. Uh, the one closed. Bosco's closed recently down No. There. Yeah, do you believe that Bosco's is closed? <sighs> You're killing me. And we didn't cool mention Springs. That. Did I mention Cool Springs Brewery? Yeah, What's you What's the one? That. Turtle Anarchy. There's more. There's more. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. Nashville is bringing up, oh, Harpeth Rising, something like that. Anyways. That's, that's a Creedence song. It is. I knew you were going there. <laughs> Should we describe, taste, sniff, and all that beer? You can do we'll it look on at your it first. own. Oh, yeah, let's look at it. It's a, it looks like. It's dark. It looks more like black there's than maple this. syrup in my Coca-Cola. I like yeah. that. I oh. like that. See, that's a very eloquent description. Thank you very much. Thank you. It does. And, you know, you expect a stout to be black like that, right? I mean, mm-hmm. pretty much. Nice little tiny foamy head it's on like the top. Like fine leather. Yeah. Not like my neighbor that. who went to the tanning booth too many times. <laughs> and now yeah. she's dead. Right. <laughs> That's. I wonder yeah. what this smells like. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's <laughs> smell it. Speaking of dead. It smells nothing like Ooh, her. No, it's a good stout smell, though. It's got a rich body. Very, you know, good. That it's pungent kind of without being Roasted. offensive. Yeah. Roasted you notice how dark. educated people get when they get on the show? I know, I know, all of a sudden. It's got an excellent sinus cavity. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, you get people on the show and all of a sudden they're very, yeah, yeah. The, the words <laughs> come out. Yeah, they're so smart when they leave. Kind of, <laughs> that food network has done it to all of us. We can't taste anything without, Why is there right? not a beer network? Ah, oh, there should be. There should be. But I bet there is. I believe it's the NFL. You see people eat a Twinkie now and they're like, I love the way the cake mixes with the <laughs> texture of the cr- Right? Because of that damn Guy Fieri. That's exactly right. Have you written a song to on about Guy Fieri? No. He says in fact, this may be the first time I've heard his name. Oh, really? I'm a little behind on the cooking show. Oh. This guy is a song waiting to be written. All right. He's a total jackass. He's cool. <laughs> and he doesn't he, listen to the show. Sp- he speaks highly of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, let's have a taste. We'll talk okay. about Guy Fieri. Here we go, mm. folks. Cheers. <laughs> oh, here's to uh, whatever. Where's a good... Um, where's good? I lost all the good, uh... Sweet. Hmm. There you go. All it, my friends! <laughs> <laughs> all three of them. Lost all my good toast. Ooh, it's that's smooth real... like like French toast. It is. Yeah, you know, real sweet. Sweet, roasted. Yeah. Oh, you know what Slightly you taste nutty. in there? It's barrel-aged, and that's why you get a hint of vanilla. Because and the it's bourbon. been in a bourbon barrel. Mm-hmm. Which used I to be a maple that. syrup barrel. <laughs> it, I think it was. Yeah, before they inherited them mm-hmm. from... Mm-hmm. Spicy vanilla character, they say, and a warming finish. Do you feel warm? I do. I feel pretty warm. That could be the measles, though. It was, <laughs> yeah, that's been going around, mm-hmm. even in NHL. You had your shot? I, I, yeah, but I haven't had the measles shot yet. Have you had your shot? <laughs> <laughs> I got that. It wasn't really, <laughs> You're I didn't funny. Notice, you know what? I didn't really get the joke out right, though, but you no, got I'm the gist. Mm-hmm. But that's who, all I need. Who are some of your favorite comedians now? I just mentioned, I saw your well, picture. Well, Chaz Holland. Thank you. 
Uh, favorite comedians. Let's see. Letterman, Poundstone, Newhart, Paula Poundstone, Louis C.K. Yeah, I agree. Um, Colbert. Colbert, yes. Although I don't consider him a comedian so much as an actor, but yes, he was. A, he certainly was a comedian for a long time. Uh, John Stewart, of course, also no longer a comedian, but certainly started there. Yeah. Uh, Who, and he retired this. He's week. He's leaving, right? Well, he's going to retire this yeah. year. Yes, he's not gone yet. You know what we can do? That was a good glitch. What can we Let's do? Let's go. And and Steve said he would join us to talk about tonight's top six. Six. Yay! Yay. So this is a poor man's top ten list. It is when you can only afford six. (laughs) Exactly. You got a problem with sex? This is Smith and Weston, and you've had your six. Yeah, we like. I'm sorry, I interrupted your song. You can interrupt. We, oh, we, we always uh, interrupt. Mike that and I song. talk over it all the oh, time. Yeah. We've heard it. Okay. Uh, we've heard it way more than six times. <laughs> so tonight we're going to look at a top six list: f- the funniest songs. Right. Funniest songs. This came from UltimateClassicRock.com. Funniest classic rock songs. Steve, you should be an expert on this. I mean, songs that are classic rock hits that weren't meant to be funny. I think. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's anything weird Al Yankovic on here. But these are songs that were yeah that were classic rock songs, mm-hmm. but they think were kind of funny. Let's hit the first one and you'll kind of Let's see what do. they're getting at. And here's the first one on the list. They have short people got no reason. <laughs> Randy Newman from '77. No wow. What do you think? Do you think it was a funny one? Oh yes. No it's funny enough that he wrote it 77 more times. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Notice that it sounds like the Dr. Pepper commercial. And that was one of his biggest hits. He writes the same thing over and over, but they're genius. I love Randy Newman. I love Randy Newman as well. Um, I love his two songs. I never thought about the fact he has two songs. Is it? But you're kind of right. I'm being mean. I should be more respectful. He is a genius. He's, I, he's, he writes some really beautiful songs, yes, too, he though. But I love one, to see you smile. So people go. Yeah. That was pretty good. 12 people got Dr. Pepper. It does sound like that. Did he write that song? <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, did he? Yes, he did. Oh. I had no idea he's a Dr. Pepper man. Well, he's not. He, he just not. He's, just, he's just a whore. Uh, <laughs> that's what it is. I say that with love. Yeah, of course. We love you, Randy. If you're li- I know he's listening. Let's go to number five. I'm trying to imagine what the other songs huh? are. What's oh. funny? Oh, let's hear number five. And then yeah, please. Maybe we'll see what this author from Ultimate Classic Rock is getting at from number five. Because some of these I disagree with. Okay. Yeah. ACDC. Big balls. Remember this? I mean, my, Steve, you remember it. You, oh, yeah. Right away. Mm-hmm. I bet you Paradise by the Dashboard Light is on here. Oh. It ought to be. That's pretty funny. I'm looking. At, I get the list in front of me. He's this cheating. One, yeah. I kind of like this one because this is one of those. <laughs> the, I'll tell you what I love about this it's song. It's a little on the nose for me. <laughs> well, it is. But <laughs> I'll tell you gross. what. It is. But... <laughs> Big balls are on the nose. <laughs> yeah, no, I, those days are behind me, Chad. <laughs> well, now you don't need the money, so. <laughs> oh, I, I still need the money. What I love about this song, though, is this is one of these songs that gets around censorship. Hmm. Because I always hear it's an age old argument. Like, their artists are going, like, you shouldn't censor my work. But I always think it's like a double standard because when censorship is there, artists do the most clever things to get around it. You know what I mean? That is true. I have a, I have a song entitled. Shit, shower, and shave, which goes over much better when I bleep myself. When I do, the, the word shit is in there nine times, and each time I get to there, if it's at the Bluebird or somewhere, I'll go. Pfft, which you is bleep much funnier. It's much funnier to say <laughs> shower and shave, and or like the so. old shaving cream song, that <laughs> old. Yeah, you that is it a, is it fast like some of your others? No, it's okay. a pretty slow one. Because I could see you messing that up and say shit by mistake. And go, Actually, oh, I mean, mother, I meant to say shit. Well, mother. I'm a co-writer on that one, and my co-writer usually sings lead, and I'm just in charge of bleeping. <laughs> so she goes, it's, it's from a woman's point of view. She's about how she's low maintenance. It's, it's really a pretty oh, cool song. Oh, nice. How all these other bitches, well, they take all the time. They'll make you late for everything. I just need to <laughs> shower and shave, and we're on our way. <laughs> and if you know the expression. So you do the. I do the. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably play some instruments, too. I play the guitar on that. She just sings it. Nice. I like it. See, it's one of those. It's kind of, that one's kind of onto the nose, too. Is it on the, nah. under the nose? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere in here. I don't know where. 
let's hit the number four song from this. It's a kind of bizarre list, but I guess they're trying to find like classic rock songs that are kind of funny too. Not necessarily songs meant to be funny, but this is their fourth. Watch out where the huskies go. Don't you eat that yellow snow. <laughs> you know, well, Zappo. Sure, of course, yeah. that's funny. I've never been a big Zappa listener, but don't you this Yellow Snow from Frank Zappa? He's got a lot that could be on this list. Almost every song of his is funny <laughs> yeah. in some way. 74. Yeah. I always was partial to Baby Take Your Teeth Out. <laughs> just <'cause> <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a funny I like, title. I like Broken Hearts of Her Assholes. <laughs> That's a great song. Shall I sing you a little bit of that one? Yeah. Yes, let's hear Okay, it. you're going to love this. Broken hearts of her assholes. Broken hearts of her assholes. Are you an asshole? Broken hearts of her assholes. Are you an asshole too? What you going to do? And then my favorite part is, I'm going to ram it, ram it, ram it, ram it up your poop chute. <laughs> <laughs> like he didn't hear that. He says it again. <laughs> it's terrible. Did that get on the list? <laughs> that should have been on there. The whole list should be Zappa. <laughs> were you, I know. Were you guys big Zappa fans? I am. I, I am too, yeah. I don't own any Zappa, but I've always had friends play like, hey, check out this Frank Zappa thing. And he's had tons of great musicians in his band, mm-hmm. of course. And he's a great musician too. Mm-hmm. Steve Vai was in his band. That's where he became yeah. famous and he is credited on the, on many Zappa records as, you know, it says bass, this player, keyboard, that player. It says impossible guitar parts, Steve Vai. Vai. That makes sense. Adrian Ballou has been in his band. Yes. Adrian Ballou was on our podcast. No. He sure was. Really? He was. Was he, was he here? No, no, he was on the phone, but still. Remote. He, was still he doesn't here. answer my calls. Really? Mm-hmm. That's obnoxious. I thought he was kind of uppity. Tell him you know Chaz Yeah, I'll tell do him that. You're on Next the time I will try. All right, let's go to number three. Number three. And uh, I haven't talked to I mean, he didn't really. Yeah, that's the only call he answered, though. <laughs> I think I just emailed him and said, you want to be on an interview? And he goes, okay. That's great. Yeah, he's nice. he seemed nice. All right, let's go to number three. <laughs> really? I didn't think this was funny This is either. funny. What's funny is that he recycled Sweet Warren Home, Z. Alabama. Oh, was that that's before funny. this? This is Warren Zevon, where I was in London from 78. Yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Sweet Home was first. I think you're right. That's somebody plagiarized older. somebody. I think I'm they both think. plagiarized Kid Rock. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. <laughs> when did Sweet Home Alabama come out? That's I what I was thinking. Early 70s. I guess it was mid-70s. mid-70s yeah. yeah. It could, there's only a couple of years difference. And you're right. I, I see. You know, we talked a couple of weeks ago yeah, about top infringement. Six, top six. Copyright rip-off. infringement. Yeah, and that should have been on there. Where sure. was in London? Poor Warren Zevon. Of course, wow. he's not with us anymore. No, so. but that song needs to go and put some Zappa. No, not Zappa. Um, I didn't think. I never thought that song was funny. It says here. Meatloaf. Put Meatloaf in there. Yeah. It says Warren Zevon is the crown prince of black humor. We never agree. Who crowned with, that prince? We never know. agree with the top six. We always argue. Right. Yeah, that's six. what part of the reason we look at it. I to, see. To argue. Okay. And the next song. You I don't bring me flowers. Totally, yeah, that's funny. You're having my babies, a funny song. <laughs> this next song I totally disagree with. I want to hear you guys' opinion. <laughs> uh, it's funny on many levels. You do think it is the, it the biggest level being the cross-dressing level? That's always funny. Yeah, low love from the Kinks. Yes, but but also it's funny because it's one of Weird Al's first songs that he parodied. Oh, to make Yoda, and that's always in my head when I hear this. Really, I didn't know that. Why don't you know this, Chaz? I I don't know enough Weird Al. The only Weird Al I know is uh, I'll turn I'll turn off the Kinks from 1970. <laughs> but the only Weird Al song I know is uh, whatever I saw in I I did like the movie UHF. Oh, good. The biggest Nobody ball liked twine. that movie, and you liked it. That's great. I actually saw it at the theater. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dang. Before Kramer was huge. He was You're so UHF. weird. Why well, would you know? Th- why would you have seen that at the theater and not be able to name another Weird Al song? Well, there was a time in my life, I think it was like late high school, where often on Fridays, we would leave class and go to the matinee movie. Whatever it was. Yeah. I see. So you saw it by accident. I think we wanted to see it too, and I think we laughed our asses off. Well, I hope so. Off. You were there. Yeah, I don't think we had. I don't think we objected to it once it started. And the biggest ball of twine in mm-hmm. in Minnesota, right? Was yeah, in that. We laughed about so. that. And there was some segment called Spatula City mm-hmm. that we laughed about yeah. for the next <laughs> few months because they, they were like, "We're going to, sp- <laughs> honey, I can't find the spatula," and they're like all excited about going to Spatula City. Mm-hmm. Mike's going, "What are you talking about? No, I didn't see that. You one. missed Sorry. that and that thing you do. Both. Wow." That's two on my list. And Michael Richards is yeah. in, in pre Kramer mode. Okay. Yeah. He's uh Was he funny? Yes. Oh yeah. Was he Kramer? And Judy Tenuta. There's a lot of funny She's people in that. Victoria Jackson. Jackson before she lost her mind. Yeah, she did. She was a good funny song mm-hmm. type person. Yeah. She was the well. pre Phoebe Phoebe. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, I always thought the pre Phoebe Phoebe kind of was Terry Gar. 
Sort of, but she didn't sing. But That's Terry Garr true. played Phoebe's mom on Friends. Oh, she did? Yes, she did. Oh, she was... So there you go. Maybe that's why I think Maybe that. so. I you probably saw it and then... <laughs> you think you thought it. of that. You think I, you're being clever. I probably saw it after a podcast <laughs> when we had drunk a lot of beer and that's just right. forgot and just that's right. thought I had, had mm-hmm. made that connection. Let's go to the number one. This better funny be funny. Song. It's not the best recording. <laughs> I've got a parody of this one. You do? The Dr. <laughs> Hook cover the Rolling Stone. <laughs> this is a funny song. You know who wrote this? I don't. Shel Silverstein. Who's Shel Silverstein? Tell us <gasps> more. Tell us more, Uncle Shel Steve. Silverstein, one of the most prolific writers, poets, songwriters of the 60s and 70s, or maybe 50s as well. He wrote Where the Sidewalk Ends. He wrote The Giving Tree. Oh, he wrote those? Uh-huh. And a lot of funny stuff, and that song, and a lot of other very clever things. I had no idea. Google Shel talking. Silverstein. And There's a whole world you don't know about, Chaz. Yeah. That is I a funny song. Quotes. I would. I agree with that one. Yeah, that one, I exactly. Some of them I was like, really? Because that's... Hey, is that computer that you just played that from, is that online? Yeah. Because you could go right to the Fump and find my parody of that, which is not on any CD. Let's do it real quick. It's on called, this show. Yeah, we could do this just off the cuff. Here's the deal. Do you remember, I think it was about a year ago, or was it two years ago? I the, remember a year ago. That the, <laughs> that the Boston Marathon was bombed. Yeah. Was it two years ago? I think it was almost two years ago. Uh, and the the two bombers, one of them died in the ensuing melee, and then the other one went to jail and wound up on the cover of the Rolling Stone. And at the time, I was a subscriber to the Rolling Stone, so my issue arrived in my mailbox, and there's a picture of a terrorist. And all my musician friends and me dying to be on the cover of the Rolling Stone, we can't do it, but this guy manages it. So if you click my name on there, Chaz... It You'll then, me tender at the time. Yeah, then it'll, it'll come to a list of my songs. And if you go down about a dozen songs, one of them should say cover of the Rolling Stone. And I just set it up. And if you play it now, the timing will be unbelievable. Because he's picking a jury. They're picking a jury. Oh, is that happening strong. now? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I just meant timing because I'm talking about it. Oh. <laughs> I'm just laughing well, at Well, two timings. The title, Fair enough. What's in My Hot Dog. Oh, yeah. We have to play that one at some point. Unless you don't want to, in which case we don't have No, it, it reminds me of, uh... Hey, 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 hey. hey it's me. Hey. Remember me? Uh, I'm famous. Because I blew up the Boston hey, Marathon. Uh, Remember? I was a total nobody. My face was pretty spotty. Got ignored wherever I was. So I got me a big old crock pot. And stuffed it full of explosives. That's right. Then I put my hoodie on, went to the marathon, where everybody's mind got blown. They said, boy, we're going to get you. Then they put my picture on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone. I got to see my picture on the cover. Stone. Because I'm a homicidal mother. Stone. You get to see my smiling face on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Shut down Boston, scared everybody out of their brain. Oh, that's true. They interviewed my poor old daddy. He said my boys must have been framed. What? He couldn't believe what his sons had achieved. I'd have thought he'd be proud, but no. He was annoyed and bitter till his boy got his picture on the cover of the Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone. I got to see my picture on the cover. Stone. Wish I could send the in my eyes and now millions of kids all over the world have me to idolize oh yeah forget music just get a facial tick and a cooker and a cellular phone and you can be a terrorist you can get your picture on the cover of the rolling stone rolling stone i got to see my picture on the cover because i'm a sociopathic baby murdering
was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I remember they got a lot of uh, shit. For that. They, I did? Hope they did. I think oh, yeah, I canceled my subscription. Thank you very much. That was That's a big deal. Awesome. Man. I didn't know who got a. They got a lot of shit for. Oh, for putting him on the. On the yeah. Cover, not yeah. for the song. No, no. no the <laughs> there was no reaction to the song whatsoever. <laughs> no, I think a reaction. Too to bad song. that song didn't get out there. <laughs> That's that's awesome. I never even thought about that. I, well, guys, I don't get Rolling Stone, I guess, so I missed the terrorist edition. Yeah. yeah well, it ain't stuff. the same. You're not missing much. It's hard to believe that's been two years. Mm -hmm. it and we'll have to listen to What's in My Hot Dog later. I know. I thought of that. I saw that there was... Jake Johansson used to do a whole thing about, like, uh, hot dog, and he's really? like, I bite into it, and there's a white ball, and <laughs> what is that? I love and, him, yeah. That's yeah, good. good you impression know what I mean? How, he, how yeah. he does it, he's like, do, do they come with, you know, now more white balls included? <laughs> and he cracked me up. Yeah. He was so nervous. He's and, great. And uh, I don't know, is he still around, I, I guess, he is. right? He's not exactly world famous anymore, but yeah, he's still doing yeah. comedy. I didn't know if he was still... He's another one of my favorites, uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. Oh, I forgot to list him. He's really smart. He's brilliant. Just, I think everybody the, thinks he's an idiot, but yeah, he's not. No. He, he's a so very clever and smart mm -hmm. guy. And didn't he do recently do like a documentary that's... He's made quite a few films, actually, that haven't gotten a whole lot of commercial success. But he makes he makes films. They pay him to do it. And then he had a stand-up special a year or two ago, which I think was entitled, Yeah, You Don't Look the Same Either. Because he's been away from it for <laughs> yeah. you know, 20 or 30 years. And it's still hilarious. He's not screaming anymore. Yeah, I think that's why funny. he got sort of, you know, of course, you know... What do you call it? Pigeonholed or whatever. Yeah, it's to be his like gimmick, silly because so, he was yeah. doing that, oh, God, that voice that, you know. <laughs> but he's, yeah, he was, I, I remember watching a stand-up special and this is probably in the 80s and I thought, oh, this guy's really funny. He's not just a goofy voice. Mm -hmm. I worked with him once. How uh, was at it? At Zany's in Nashville. It was great. And it was my job as the opening act to go pick him up at the at his hotel and bring him to the club. So in my Honda, I go pick up Bobcat Goldthwaite and he gets in the car. He's a very reasonable, nice fellow. You wouldn't know. If you, if you didn't really look at him, you might not even notice who he was because he's more recognizable by his expressions and his voice oh, than yeah. by how he looks. And then, so, you know, he's perfectly polite and, you know, appreciative of the ride. And then we get to the club and he goes nuts and does his act and then drive him back. He's all calm again. And, he's all fine. Yeah. Who else did you work with? Uh, let's see. Janine Garofalo. I like her a lot. Yeah. Um, Very political, but I still like her. Yeah. This was okay. I, this is a while back. Um uh, 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 Kevin Meany, who was big in the 90s. He was, remember they made a movie of Uncle Buck? Uh, yeah. That was with John Candy. Then they made a TV show of it, and Kevin Meany was the lead character. And it didn't do very well, but he's very funny. He, he, he'd talk about his mother and his past. We're not, we're not, we're not dessert throwing away people. <laughs> or whatever it was. Anyway, never mind. Uh, who else have I worked with that's famous? Artists. That might be it. Well um, known. Yeah. You don't have to be too famous. It doesn't have to I be worked Steve with, Martin. I worked, no, I wish I had. That'd be something. Um, I worked with this guy Chaz once. <laughs> yeah. He's you famous. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's been featured on At The Hops all right. 88 episodes. <laughs> 89. 89, 89 now. Tonight, if this yeah. one gets there. It will make it. It will make it. Good stuff, man. Well, that was, oh, you know, we never wrapped up our segment. Should we oh, yeah. the closer, Tom? Yeah, top six and, and a half. half. You there you go. There, there, forget it. there it is. And you can talk over the song. Okay, we're not. Is this your song? Yeah, you oh, make yeah. this. This is nice. original. Yeah, it's my original jingle. It's nice. You got a problem with recorded right here where we're sitting? Right here. Wow, pretty amazing, right? Yeah. And there's no little Sean Connery closer on the end, there. but that's a <laughs> church. Okay. You never, you ever knew I wrote a lot of jingles there. I did not know, realize that. I wrote a lot, and they make zero pennies. For you me, must make money like, somehow. Ah, uh, yeah, I do. Someone's my buying day all job. this beer. Exactly. <laughs> It's my day job, okay. man. It's one of those things. Let's go hear another song. Let's go hear that one you did at the beginning. Actually, can you set it up again? Which one that are we talking one about? One about uh, I, I just forgot. Oh, me, the Valentine's love thing. Me tender. Sure, I'll set it up again because Valentine's Day is coming up. Yeah. Uh, I tried to think of something romantic to do, and when you're thinking about romance, the first thing that comes to mind, if you're like me, is Tinder. Tinder.com. It's a it's a dating app that you can use on your phone. If you join up, uh, you can see other singles who are within your vicinity, within 100 feet or 1,000 feet, <laughs> whatever you want. And mostly it's for 20-somethings to hook up. It's basically a sex app. And uh, who are mm. we kidding? So what could be more romantic than that? And, of course, the problem is that the only people who understand this concept are under 25, but they've never heard of Elvis. So I decided to try to bridge this with bridge the following the gap. brilliant piece of work. And isn't that what Tinder is all about? Yeah. Bridging the gap. Bridging the app. Let's bridge it. Oh, better. let's go here and then let's. Uh, we get the drudge. Uh, drudge. Relud. <laughs> You've done Is that this a before. New word. Right? Relud. Supposed to rate 
both of these beers that we drank. Ah, uh, beer rating. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go hear the song first. Love me on Tinder. Love me sweet. I don't have all night. And you're within 500 feet. So swipe me to the right. Love me on Tinder. Swipe me through. Say my dream. Are real. You have a smoking profile pic, and darling, I'd like to cop a few bathroom selfie. 3 a.m. Boy, I sure look fine. You never know. I'm three foot ten, or that my hair ain't mine. Love me on Tinder, love me fast. I love this fucking app. I'm in, I got two more after you. Hope no one's got the measles. Love me on Tinder, Tinder. Hey, you'll do your name. Sure, I'd like to know. <laughs> Why not? We'll be done in just a few. I don't actually love you. Well, bless my soul, you look so good And you're right here in my neighborhood You like my smile and I like your butt It ain't love, but let's hook up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, let's hook up Well, this one's a honey, this one's a hoe It's three in the morning, let's go I ain't nothing but a horn dog Scrounging all the time I ain't never had a woman except the skanks I find online. Oh, yeah! Woo! Well, thank you very much. Do I have to answer honestly? No. You have to be very honest. You know one thing we're going to do here? This was unscheduled, unprecedented, but we haven't done it in a while. We're not having a beer this time. Wait a minute. Oh, if it's unprecedented, one. you've never done it. No, we haven't. That's right. Is that what that means? This yeah. Year. Oh. You're going to use big words, dude. I thought it was a country without a, without a president. <laughs> I don't know. Without good government. <laughs> we're going to, you know, we, we were going to, actually, this wasn't scheduled, but let's do it because, because Steve, because Chaz have is good the boss. Answers. We're going to do a real quick speed round. Yay. Yeah. Ah, are you ready? Steve? I'm pumped. We're going to ask you 10 personal questions and okay. you can try to answer them as fast as as you can. Okay. We're gonna put on a timer. We've even got a clock. If I can remember where it is. Are you ready? No. But do it anyway. All right. Here we go. If you had to choose a new name, what would you choose? Chocolate Parfait. Name a brand or type of clothing you refuse to wear. Uh, anything with uh, Jacqueline Smith on it. <laughs> name the last album you listened to in your car. Uh, meatloaf. Bad out of whatever. If you could Bill. have dinner with any person, living or dead, who would it be? Um, your mom. Nice. Name a movie that makes you cry. Forrest Gump. Oh, good one. Hollywood wants to make a movie about your life. Name the actor who would play you. Forrest Gump. Name your favorite childhood story. Chocolate Parfait. If you had to be trapped in a television show, what would you like it to be? Uh, the Weird Al Show. You've been asked to write your autobiography. What would you like to call it? Uh, three Men and a What the Hell is That? <laughs> Name a song or artist you love to wake up to. Prince. Oh, you did. <laughs> Another record. <laughs> that was less than a minute. That was amazing. Well, I can lie really quickly. It was very good. <laughs> and I. Uh, By the I, way, that last one, that's the funny one to me because I can't stand Prince. I can't stand Prince either. But you probably for different reasons. Why can't you stand him? 
I just it doesn't. I just don't like the music. I mean, I, I mean, I can understand people love it, and I can and I and I can appreciate what he does, mm-hmm. but I just it doesn't. It's funny because he's one of the most prolific and consistently successful yeah. songwriters, producers, performers of all time. That part I do respect. <laughs> the reason I can't stand him is he's the one person who consistently refuses to let Weird Al parody anything of his. Oh, He's got really such an attitude. He takes himself so seriously to the point where Al finally quit asking. But at one point, I, th- I don't know how long ago it was, not too many years ago, they were at some sort of award per- uh, ceremony, both Prince and Al were at this thing. And they happened to be seated not too far from each other. And Prince's people got a note to Al saying, please don't make eye contact with Prince. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's... Uh, You're a douche, buddy. He is kind I of... I think that's the test. He is kind of... That is the word, douche. And we can say it. He's an insult show. to douches everywhere. <laughs> he makes douches look bad. <laughs> no, I don't now. understand. The word douche is French for bath. Yeah, I know. It is kind of funny. Why is that so? When you're Paris and everyone wants to fit on douche, it's like, Mm -hmm. excuse me, you want to do what? I appreciate when people douche. Exactly, they love it over there. It's just fun to say douche. We did a we had an interview in Paris last a douche show. (laughs) We had a douche show when I was in Paris. We had C. Prey on for our douche episode. Really, that bad, huh? He was really good. I thought this was the douche show. One douche, three. I'll tell you this though: when I played in Paris, well, you had the same experience in Europe. I'm sure that was extremely appreciative Mm -hmm. of. Of, uh, I was shocked going to places. I just played some open night mic nights in mm-hmm. Paris, and I was shocked. I was thinking, you know, I'm going to be the old gray haired guy. They're going to go, oh, who the hell is this old? Yeah, the guy American playing nobody likes. Yeah. Completely the opposite. Yeah, I never got to Paris, but we were in France for a little bit, and we were so lost, just lost, and the GPS wasn't working because we were in the wrong country, and we couldn't find where we were supposed to stay. And it turns out we were only about a mile from it, but the roads are so completely yeah. one way and, and very spaghetti like. So we stopped in a small grocery store. And uh, Jenny asked the woman behind the counter in English, gave the, showed her the address, and the woman only spoke French, and so wasn't able to really tell us anything. But she went to a map that this store happened to have on the wall. It's probably been there for 30 years. And she's pointed without any English, or nobody really could understand what the other was saying. This is where you are now. This is where you need to be. And just, here's what you got to do. And she wrote it down. And, but she was writing it down in French. And so Jenny yeah. said, can I take a picture Oh, no, can I buy a copy of this map? And and she seemed to understand that, but there, this was the only copy of the map. So this very nice French person took the map off the wall and gave it to us. That's great. And people say very the nice. French are rude. I think the opposite. I think, and in I've my said experience, this, the opposite. On this show before, being someone who grew up in the D.C. area, mm-hmm. uh, when we were downtown, we kind of, when there was large groups of tourists, we were sometimes rude to them. <laughs> And I think in Paris, when there's large groups of tourists, they can yeah. sometimes get sick of them. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes Americans are very upset that they see a picture of themselves. You know, like, yeah. how dare them? Mm-hmm. But like, one-on-one, most people are pretty decent. Yes. They're like, we're, we're 20 Americans armed strong and on a bus mm-hmm. and wearing uh, wife beater shirts. And <laughs> they should treat us with respect and speak <laughs> English. And yeah. I think they get, and they get sick of it. Let's go, though. Here, a quick word from our sponsor. Where are we going? Good work on the speed round there. Thanks. See, once again, I was told to be fast, not to have any quality. You were excellent. I think I used the same answer twice. It's okay. And you remember that Jacqueline Smith had a clothing line. <laughs> that was brilliant. Let's go. <laughs> Hear word from Audien, and then we'll go rate these beers finally. <laughs> hey, folks. Are you a musician or a band looking to get the best quality recording of your music at the lowest rates in town? Then you should go to the recording studio of choice for so many great artists, including myself, Chaz E., and Mike Mitchell from At The Hops. That's Audion Recording Studios. As a special exclusive to Audion Recording Studio will offer all At The Hops listeners 10% off of their first session that'll make your next album or demo absolutely affordable. For more information, please call 615-667-1080 or go to www.audionrecording.com, A-U-D-I-O-N, recording.com. The bell rings. For whom? Mother! There you go. For whom? You had me. Michael always sings a little John Lennon for us. <laughs> Steve, this is the portion where you are so central to the show's theme 
of music and beer because you're a musician really? and mm-hmm. you're going to rate the beers that we tasted today on okay. a scale, a very special musician scale. G. And that was good. No. One sharp. One sharp, exactly. See, that's how you know that Steve's a real musician. He knows it's one sharp. <laughs> it's either going to be, it's a hit. Get that sound. Or close enough for rock and roll. Rock and roll! It's kind of loud. That was in one of your songs. Yeah. Or don't quit your day job. And then, oh, that's not good. So we'll go through both beers. Let me go over the scale again. Hit. Yep. There you go. Can I do it again, the sound? If yep. you like. It's your thumb. It's your computer. <laughs> and then uh, close enough. For rock and roll. Rock and roll! And... I forgot what the last one Don't was. Quit Don't your quit day your day job. job. It's okay. like, yeah. Oh, then I like that at all. Nobody likes to get That's that. That's a right pretty thing. harsh one, man. I know. I, I I hate. Have we? Yeah, we have given it out. We? <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we've had a few. Here we go. Are you ready? The first beer we had. Oh, let me turn that down a little bit. Blasting. Yeah, the first beer we had was from Green Flash Brewing Company out in San Diego, California. It's a Green Flash Imperial IPA. That means it's got twice as much stuff in it. Steve <laughs> Goody. <laughs> oh, the irony of me rating beer. <laughs> Did you think it was, it's a hit, close enough for rock and roll, or don't quit your day job? I'm going to go with close enough for rock and roll, Chaz. I love that sound bite. I'm glad you picked it. <laughs> Any reason? I love that sound bite, Chaz. <laughs> there you go. I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mike, what did you think about that? No, wait, wait. One? My oh, reason. Ahead, wait, let me see if I realize. Yeah, my reason is, it wasn't bad enough to kill me. But yes. it wasn't so great that it made me go, hey, I must have more. It was a little too hoppy for That's me. It's like, interesting. People describe Lyme disease with the same words. <laughs> I'm as, just as enthusiastic about Lyme disease. <laughs> what did you think about it, Mike? I'm going to say close enough to rock and roll chess. Yeah. But for different reasons, I bet. That's Mick Jagger. <laughs> I know. You're Mick Jagger. He stops by every week. Yeah, I kind of agree with you guys. It's probably about there. Medium. Okay. It's good. <laughs> I wouldn't turn it down. Let's go to the second beer now that we got the skinny on that one. Here we go. Second beer was a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout from Schlafly Brewery out in St. Louis, Missouri. A Russian imperial stout. Steve Goody, did you think it was it's a hit close enough for rock and roll or don't quit your day job? Chaz, yes. I've given this a lot of thought. And I think it's going to be a, <laughs> bear with me here, I'm waiting. close enough for rock and roll plus. Oh. Then we get this too. The fan no. screaming, no. little plus no. at the no. end. I think that's the first. Even this. It's close enough to rock and roll plus that we've had. Yeah, rock I tend and to make plus? my own category. Why, why was that? What's well, different? I enjoyed it more than the first one. Yeah, but it's still. It, there was something. It was, it was a something I can't quite put my finger on. Oh yeah, I don't like beer. <laughs> oh man, that gets the. <laughs> How would he get on the show? <laughs> well, he's that's been inviting me for three so years. So long, yeah. Th- <laughs> Three years, yeah. He used to work for Tom T. Hall. Every night he'd sing, oh, I like beer. <laughs> okay. You know, that's the thing. Like, at first, when we started the show, it was so easier. I think it was so easy to get people here because we got all the beer drinkers first. <laughs> now we're into You've run the, through all of them. They're all in rehab. We're in every town in town that likes beer. <laughs> I used to get emails all the time. Please, can I come on? <laughs> yeah. I understand you have beverages. Yeah, I understand there's free beer and free. stuff. <laughs> Mike, what did you think about that second one? I'm going to give it it's a hit. Yeah. yeah. Well done. I I mean, not to so much. I'm not to copy you. Like oh, I go ahead do. and copy me. Yeah, I thought it was. Oh no! Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, let me do that again. I thought it was. It's a hit. Too. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I can't do my own sound effects. We need a producer or something. Yeah. Why don't we get a producer? We need some. We know. need some. Personnel. I wanna be a producer. Oh, what is that from? The producers. Oh, that is the Mel Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> we need some so personnel perfect that on the you show. asked me that. I just know. Then. It's a good thing that you knew the great. answer. <laughs> That's like, you know. What's that movie Dances with Wolves called? <laughs> uh, sh- oh, yeah. man. What's Field that movie where they do the dirty dancing called? Yeah, that's it. Uh, well, uh, 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 wait, don't tell me. Wait. Yeah, Hold on. It's, it's, it? um, uh, Footloose. Yeah. <laughs> that's a classic. Have dirty dancing. That was filmed in Crossville. Some of it, right? And some of it in Canada, I thought, too. Yeah. A few scenes. I think most of it was in Crossville, Tennessee. Since it's so close, I yeah. thought I'd mention that. I love it. Steve Goody, my friend, where can people find you online? I am hard to find. Yes. The best place is www.stevegoody.com. 
www.stevegoody.com. Love That's it. easy enough. That's www.stevegoody.com. Also, the thump. Dot com. The word FUMP is an acronym for Funny Music Project. TheFUMP.com for all your funny music needs. I love it. I love it. We you can also, if you're, if you're really desperate, BluebirdCafe.com, uh, ActualSizeDuo.com. I'm part of a singing duo. We're not in the same city, so we don't get to perform together oh. that much anymore. But we're going to converge on Kansas City next week for the big Folk Alliance convention 2015. Me and Andy Corwin will be doing funny irreverent songs of the sort we've got one called the agnostic gospel song we've got one called cowboy by day ballerina by night that sort of thing so if you're in kansas city next that's, week that's the new lola <laughs> <laughs> i love it you have no idea the last line of it's all about a cowboy who wants to be a ballerina and the last line is yippee i yo plie which is just <laughs> did that line it. come before the song no in oh. fact andy wrote the song and had finished the song and performed it somewhere, and a friend of his came up to him after. I've got the perfect last line for the song. Nippie A.O. Plie. Oh, wow. That's so he didn't even write it. It Still. was just given as a gift. Beautiful. Very so that's actualsizeduo.com. We can't thank you enough for being here. Yes, you can. Thank you. Try. Okay, we'll try. It was Let's a lot that. of fun, Steve. It was a lot of it fun. Was. It was. Just it's joy to be here. Three years in the making. Oh, I know. Steve Goody on We'll do show. it again in three more years. All right. That's a promise, I hope. We'll okay, you hope. I hope we're here in three years. <laughs> it might be in a different location, but we'll be here. We'll be here. Somewhere smaller. I hope yes, we're somewhere. A smaller venue. All right, everybody else, you can find us at Facebook. You can find us at thehops.com. And uh, we'll see you next week, right? I hope so. Keep drinking beer. Cheers, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Thanks for listening to At The Hops. Don't forget to leave us feedback and visit us regularly at www.atthehops.com. All songs performed on this program are the property of the artist. Use of these songs without the artist's consent is prohibited. See you next round. Because I like the taste of imported beer and I like the kind they brew right here. Because I'm very open-minded, that's the way I've been reared And I want to have a great, great day A deuce show? <laughs>